Hello and welcome to the Curious Collective podcast, conversations designed for the conscious community to bring awareness to those holistic practices to help you live your best life. So tap into the wisdom and knowledge of our beautiful guests to extract what you need to heal, transform and live as your true soulful self. Today, I am super excited like a little kid (laughs) to have with us the gorgeous Odell Wolfenden. Mm. Um, I actually found Odell through a local community page where she dropped this amazing comment to someone that had put it there. I'm like, (gasps) the energy of it was like, who is this? (laughs) I need to know (laughs) her. And I clicked onto it and we, and I voice messaged and we've been chatting ever since. So with no further ado, I would love to introduce you to Odell. And Odell, could you please tell us a little about yourself and what makes your heart sing in this life? Mm, thank you, Katie. Oh, I'm so excited to be here also. Um, I just said to you before that I feel like opening up the channel for this conversation today, every spirit and everything wants to come through me. So we'll see where we go. Could be could be a t- three-hour conversation, but uh, I don't think you'll let that happen. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, I feel like... Um, that's beautiful that you found me through that way because it was such a potent time when I shared that message. It was felt so, it was a time where I felt so, uh, raw and, and actually for the, one of the first times really felt the strength of my anger and rage around the fact that what happened was I put a post around sacred dancing, which is now one of my like primary offerings sacred ecstatic dance and and someone was basically trolling it (laughs) and and I was like I will not stand for this so as best as I could with the foundation of love wrote a response or a post on the community notice page of however many 17,000 people or so and yeah it was a it was a brave move at that time because I hadn't done something like that specifically that broad before Mm -hmm. I've done things more on a low key and it wasn't naming and shaming it was more a generalization of like wow this is this goes way beyond what happened to me this goes for every woman man and child's Mm -hmm. expression and freedom and so it was deeply empowering to do that. So I just wanted to touch on that because I feel like it's the, yeah. a beautiful foundation for what I stand for and the work that I am doing myself and encouraging for each and every human on this planet also. Mm-hmm. So essentially everything that I bring forward, my work for this earth is all to do with freedom of soulful expression which Mm, means of course that we need to then reconnect with our souls to be able to express from that level Mm. i have found that sound dance song so music song dance to be such for me, I feel to be the most powerful tools that we have readily available in every moment to alter our state of consciousness to then be able to drop us into the unconscious realm, subconscious realms and start to uncover who we are. And of course, this doesn't just happen like in one sitting, of course, you can have experiences where it's like quantum leap or um, you experience it like, oh, wow, I just had a huge awakening, right? That experience that you can have. And you can also be drip fed, like the tiniest little piece and you, oh, yes, (laughs) just got that. Yeah. And And I feel this is the power. So then that and then circles. So Mm. my life pretty much exists in circles. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that my name starts with an O. It's almost like it's embedded (laughs) into my into my way of being and my Mm. life. It's subconsciously like calling me forward to create circles of connection. How great would it be to just go to one every single day? Like, what do you do each day? I just sit in circle. 
<laughs> oh yeah, but honestly, we can, and we and like I would say that ceremony for yourself to definitely be doing it every day at some level. And even if there's no one else beside you necessarily, you've got your spirit team. So you're yeah. sitting in circle with yourself. And yes, it becomes way more powerful, which I'll touch on later. Of course, when you are with others, with other humans, with a, with a like-minded purpose and intention and vision for our planet, yeah. then you gather in that space and holy shit. <laughs> like uh uh-huh and it doesn't really I think there's power in small numbers I know for me I've I've gone to run like big things and then the universe is like no 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 it needs Mm. to be intimate needs to be really small but really really deep and really potent and so yeah there's this like such a level of trust and surrender when it comes to that um Oh, yeah. So circles. Thanks for, I don't know whether you brought it up or I brought it up. but it's... You, the, the dance and the song is something else that attracted me to your energy is you've just got this beautiful freedom about you where you sort of dance through life, I think. Um, now, how? what brought you to do that and know that that works for you and that's something that gets that soul expression for you? Mm. Yeah, I, like I was saying before, it's almost like that piece by piece um, discovery of what lights me up, what lights us up. Mm. And I feel like I've had this um, from a very young age, probably from when I was born. Like I cannot remember a time where I didn't want to be completely me. Mm. And And so I guess as I've continued on in life, even when I say studied occupational therapy and so that was a formal education, then went into formal work and was there for four years uh, working in aged care progressively, I got to the point in my allied health team where I was (laughs) without shoes. doing handstands like very frequently in the in the office um i would i would kind of organize my my clients and my day so i would drive out and go to clients and and so that i could stop at the parks and so that i could stop Mm. by the water and and it was almost like a no-brainer like it just happened like my my soul or my heart was and I think this is the blessing that I've that I've been given so much and now why I feel such a sacred responsibility to work with others and to do this work like full time all the time mm. because it's it's like it's so simple and life is so magic mm. but we just <laughs> Uh, so conditioned and so kind of trapped in this um, way of being that we don't think that we can do something that's outside of the box because we'll get in trouble. Mm. Mm. Um, But what I found is that, you know, I wouldn't even necessarily classify myself as a rebel necessarily. I mean, that could change. I... (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I am, but I'm not in Mm. the way that, um, you know, I, I truly just feel like I'm here to be me and so much so that I've been reflected by so many people. It's like, they say, you don't, you're not really trying. You're not like, you can't really label you or put you in a box. And, and I'm like, no, you can't. Every time I've had to write a bio or whatever. And I think this is true for so much, so many of us, probably all of us, like if I'm honest, is that we have been conditioned to have to try and label everything. And now we're going through this process as you, as you would know, on the earth where everyone's going, hang on a minute. (laughs) We can't label everything. We can't Mm. have like this many labels and titles because it's, it's a bit confusing and a bit much. And so we're going through this process of like shedding. shedding. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Shedding. Oh my gosh. And I think too, like, I don't want to label. And sometimes when I try to describe what it is that I do to people, I'm like, I just help people. Like Mm. I don't, it's, it's not a thing, right? It's just, and 
I struggle sometimes to put how I feel living this life into actual words. Yeah. It just is amazing. Like you just yeah. got to do it. Oh, you just got to do it. How simple, you know, but be, be you have a, it's not, it's not quite like that when you're, um, yeah, if you're, if you try to market yourself and this is the funny thing about marketing, of course, is that <laughs> just do it <laughs> like Nike. Um, and, and so what I found then is this, um, yeah, I guess it's that journey of like, how do you make something that's so simple actually come across and, and land with that individual, which is why I feel these spaces and these tools that we have access to are so potent and profound because it allows us to hit pause on the analytical mind yeah. and the, the ego self that's always kind of wo- worrying and stressing and overthinking everything mm. and we get to pause that and then drop into our somatic self mm. and feel it instead. That is a beautiful skill to teach people and show people and weave into their lives because how many people are just unconsciously going through life doing all the things and when you say, but how does that feel in your body? They're like, what? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah, what body? Mm. (laughs) Mm. You know, there's that old joke and say, I say it a bit around the like, you know, we're just big walking heads and and I feel like this is definitely so much of what I'm here to bring forward is the, is the medicine of the feeling self. And, mm. and yeah, I, can, I could probably go into that a little more around there's, there's so many tools and, you know, there's people who know the ins and outs of, of exactly how something affects the body down to like the synapses and the, and the T-junctions in the brain and that sort of thing. I've, I've done a little bit of that. And of course, in, in occupational therapy, I went into anatomy and I did neurology, mm-hmm. all of that. But what I've found as I've continued on my journey is for me and my work, most of that is actually irrelevant. Mm-hmm. And I've in the past felt like I'm inadequate <clears throat> because I don't know the ins and outs and the absolute details of everything. But now I'm realizing that this is, this is the potency and this is my magic that I'm here to bring forward because imagine if everyone thought they had to know everything about everything. Oh, how overwhelmed would you be? Right. So I feel so much of what I'm here to teach is that that is so much of that is irrelevant yeah. and actually if you can tap back into your body and into your intuition your instincts these things that we are born with mm-hmm. that's innate for every being then we don't have to worry so much about knowing everything because we know it mm-hmm. <laughs> you know we we just have to tr- we get to the point where we trust enough that the answers just land and i and i've got the word coming in surrender is this big like Mm. you're helping to show people to surrender and and trust and allow and tap into the power that is within them already absolutely and i wrote about this like two maybe three weeks ago i started a um um sacred soul love letters email And this was my first email. It was called The Great Surrender. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everything that I write is also a message for me. It was definitely, this one was, it was like, whoo, because straight after that, I, I got sick. I wouldn't say sick. I would say, um, I developed different symptoms in my body. And not feeling at my 100% capacity, Mm. you know, it's highly likely that my, you know, 50% capacity might be someone else's 100%, who knows? (laughs) But um, so that took me on a journey. But the the surrender piece was, it's it's so powerful and crucial for us as humans for, I feel, this next... Stay, I feel like all the time, but definitely this next 
phase that we're going through as as we evolve and this is like yeah the more the better we become at surrendering mm. oh oh my <laughs> the more uh joy bliss magic we're going mm. to experience and Oh, brings you yeah. to that beautiful place of inner peace too, where you, it's chaos can reign around you, but you're like, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I see that. Yeah, and that I mean that takes me straight. Then as soon as you said the word peace, it took me straight into uh, part of the significant work. My genius work really is. It sounds counterintuitive and almost counterproductive, but most of my life I've lived like joyful in the light, right? Mm. So I've been that free spirited child for most of my life, which has been incredible. Mm. <laughs> and <clears throat> in last year, uh, I had a journey into the darkness massively mm. and very unexpectedly because I, um, yeah, my theme for the year was rising and I did pretty much none of that and mm. I did all descending. And so what I mean by that is <sighs> my year began with finding a dead python. And so this was extremely potent at the time I was uh, exploring the wild woman archetype mm -hmm. and so when I found that when it crossed my path when she found me and I found her it was instant knowing that this was a sacred offering from spirit that I was here to journey with Mm. And so that day unfolded, nothing, everything dissolved. Like yeah. I went into a full trance state and I'd never done this before. Right. And this is, this is the level of surrender and trust that we're talking when it comes to life and being ready and willing for anything. Mm. So that whole day, whatever I might've had planned dissolved and I spent it with this Python <sighs> And little did I know that that was the beginning of the descent. And I can see you touching your heart. <laughs> You're like, oh God. <laughs> and that's exactly right because mm. the soul lives in the heart. Mm. But what happened when you, when you go down, it's actually down to the lower center of the body. So I had on a pedestal the top three, mm. four chakras. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you know, doesn't matter about the lower ones. Like it's all about up here, like mm. meditate and, you know, high vibes, you know, mm. <laughs> just light, 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 light. And then it Rainbows was, and unicorns. <laughs> uh huh. Absolutely, which is amazing. Yes, right? it is. <laughs> not not dogging the not dogging the dragons and the rainbows and the unicorns at all. But the journey last year was it took me right down into my womb, mm. and so straight after the python, um, I had two days later I had a kundalini awakening oh wow uh-huh and that was like full body like orgasm almost un um unbearable amount mm. of energy um <laughs> and from then that same day I conceived with my partner Keegan and you know I was on the cards <laughs> it was there, but you know, as, as always with me, it's never like fully planned to the T it's like, it's a possibility. Yeah. And then that day came and it was like, it's happening now. So that, that was conception same day as that amount of energy, like pulsing wow. and flowing. And I felt it happen. Like wow. I, I, <laughs> I, I felt the fireworks inside of my womb. And this was after I'd started to do um, 
I'd read the book Pussy and like things where I was like, whew, coming into yeah. this, um, yeah, myself as a sexual being because I actually was really disconnected. I didn't even masturbate or like um, touch myself before 26. Mm. So this was like, this was, <laughs> everything happened so fast. It's like you peel back one thing and then boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Everything just started happening. The so, great unraveling. Right? Absolutely. And um, so, yeah, then I went into, uh, then <laughs> through that process, I realized that, wow, there are a lot of shadows playing out in my womb space. Mm. And, of course, this is intergenerational. Yeah. So in my um lineage which i believe is actually most i would say that there is a lot of trauma passed passed down and uh, a lot of suppression and um not a lot of freedom of expression yes so um, like a start uh, the word stifled comes to me absolutely kind mm. of just like uh, prim and proper like oh don't don't dare talk about sacred sexuality that's just mm. um or say the word pussy <laughs> you know or menstruation even like just mm. plug it plug it up plug it up um yeah so that then showed me so what happened was uh Keeks and I were exploring sexually and um and another man entered the the picture and then through that I won't go into all the details um but let's just say that it was whew, very very challenging and painful and um through the other side of that was uh, was losing the child mm which was then the beginning of the descent. Yeah. Even though I was in such a place of surrender when experiencing loss like that um, and the grief that goes with it, 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 and this, and you surrender to it, it actually takes you to this place that I had never met before. Yeah. And what I found there by, because I'd been already um, journeying in circles for so long, instantly when I found out, it was like, I need my women around mm. me. So I called them in. And some of these women had never even been in a ceremony before, like never been in a circle, but they knew intuitively that they were going to be there no matter what. Goosebumps through my whole body. Right. No matter mm. how uncomfortable it might be for them, it's like that dissolves into this sacred service that they know that they're offering yeah. to this woman who's experienced loss. And of course, this is so common in our society and also very unspoken still mm -hmm. and unrecognized and unsupported um, unless you're in the, the field and the flow and you've, you know, you've opened to that space and you're in the conversation. But, the, you know, for the most part, women are still suffering yeah. in silence. And so by calling my, the women in in my life, it opens the door mm. for them to ex experience not only that space and witnessing a woman being held, but also feeling her power in that space to hold another mm. and to remember that she is capable of that. This is, of course, not just women. I work specifically at the moment with women. I know that I will work more with men in the future, not mm -hmm. right now. My partner is doing that. Keegan's doing amazing work with men. Uh, and we will do more work together coming very soon as oh, well. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to see that evolve. Yeah. Okay. I digress though. So the journey to the, to the darkness. 
So there was two main points that I remember very clearly. There's probably more <laughs> um, through last year, but of journeying and what I now call it to be the zero point. And so this is my work is safely guiding women to the zero point, meaning mm -hmm. the nothingness. Mm -hmm. like the place where there is nothing. And, and the thing that brought it up was the peace. Mm -hmm. And that's the trigger word. What exists is peace. Mm -hmm. Because you imagine if there's nothing, like it's just black. There's no, there's no um, <laughs> water bowls. There's no kids. There's no nothing. Yeah. And when you hit that, it's equally at the beginning, I would say from my experience, equally terrifying. And then it flips into absolutely, oh, how do I even describe it with words? It's hard to sometimes put these <laughs> things into words. It's like, yeah, it's coming home. I love this. I love being able to it'd be challenged to find the words for this. Um, it's coming home to when you were originally born. Oh. And <clears throat> so at the zero point, it's like it's black, but then there's this like white light. Like a rebirth. Uh-huh. So yeah. it's all black. And then all of a sudden it's this white light and it's like a homecoming to your soul self mm. and that everything is perfect. Like you, there is no fear, mm. like no, like doesn't even, the word doesn't even exist, mm. right? And this is the other part of the work that I'm here to bring forward and all goes hand to hand is to obliterate fear. Mm which of course has to always happen through our own experiences first. And this is what I call leadership in this life. I feel like I'm going all over the place, but this is the feminine, right? <laughs> this She's is in the, flow, listeners. She's in the, flow. The medicine of the, of the, the feminine. And um, yeah, we, we get to, we get to obliterate fear. We get to live in, love we get to live in peace we get to live in harmony and joy joy mm -hmm. is another word that you know it is not synonymous with happiness right there are a lot of people and children and teenagers growing up that you know if you ask them the most common answer to what do you want in life oh just to be happy mm. and i would go one step further and i would say well, it's actually really like joy. Joy mm. is one of the highest vibrations. I love joy. If I tap into <laughs> joy, I can literally feel it in my whole body, uh -huh. like all the way to my fingertips. Yep. That is beautiful. Yes. Oh, so I love that we've now come to joy because why would you, why would you want to go to the darkness if it is painful and it is hard potentially to to strip back the layers and to to get to that point where you're literally being swallowed and like nothing le is left <laughs> and the reason is is because that if we don't we we can actually not really reach the heights and this is really important because you know in a lot of our spiritual unfoldings and world and this is for me for sure as I grew up and as I started to journey into the spiritual realms and I had it on a pedestal above everything else I was like you know I'm gonna my spirituality is the most important thing out of everything <laughs> And, and that meant like it was so much around um, 
you know, meditating and reaching the heights and the heights and the heights and the heights and another high experience. Mm-hmm. But until I journeyed to the depths, I have never felt the highs that I've felt now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, oh, I got goosebumps. I feel like this is such a key point and I don't want it's anyone massive. to miss it. <laughs> it's massive and people re-listen to that because I feel like, you know, there's, there is a culture out there at the moment of just chasing that high, you know, I'm going to do this breathwork session, I'm going to do this, you know, this session, this session, this session, or I'm going to do all the things. Yeah, you're doing all the things, but you're actually doing like going into, what are you running away from? Like mm-hmm. go in and play with that, sit with that, journey through that work on that and then you can go and do all the things absolutely and and you know here's the thing as well is that um i used to think that there was a right way to do this journey and that i had to get it right and you know when i first started meditating it was like oh i gotta find the absolute right person i found Sadhguru, and he had a course the inner engineering course and i was like yeah i'm gonna do this right thing and and i practiced religiously like every day 45 minutes in the morning 45 minutes at night and i did that for like two months and i was like this is really not doing anything for me. <laughs> and and it's the it's the trust at that mm. point to just be like, okay, all right, I that's fine. I'm going to let that go and I'm going to try something else and I think this has been my greatest blessing is that um my willingness to let go of things that are just not in alignment. And when I say that, I guess I mean there's just there's just this feeling of, mm, yeah, yep. not sitting well, not sitting well with me. And, and I guess the, the faster we let go, mm. the, the quicker we find peace and yes. we access joy. You know, there's, there's a lot around, yeah, but they did this and they did that. And, but the more that we hold on to that, it's our own suffering, right? And, and so this is like last year as well, it cracked me open into compassion. Mm. And I, before that, I felt like, do I even have compassion? (laughs) I'm not joking. I, I really questioned my capacity to, to feel another deeply, like as much as my own self. Mm. And after the journey last year and fucking up so greatly, Um, not for my, you know, not for a willingness to hurt others, but Mm. because I just didn't know. And I thought that, um, I was being absolutely guided, but it was a shadow land that Mm. I hadn't been guided to before I got to the point of going through the, you know, finding out the hard way as they say. Right. Mm. And so now I'm, I'm so passionate about supporting women. So I do mentoring and three months, probably going to go up to six months because I've realized that, or maybe nine or maybe 12, who knows? (laughs) Because I'm like, you know, we get to three months and I'm like, oh, this is so juicy. But I feel like Mm. we're only just, you know, it's, they're in a really great place. Don't get me wrong. But like when it comes to, bringing your soul fully alive and um (sighs) expressing itself in every waking moment yeah it's take there's a lot of nuances there's a lot of nuances that go into this and um yeah so for me like mentoring and receiving mentorship for myself has been such a Mm. crucial part of this journey and i didn't actually have that at that time um, but after experiencing it last year, I was like, whoo, I am sold. And this is not from a place of giving your power away no. because I think this is the, this is part of the issue with coaching. Mm. And, you know, I've had so many of these conversations because there is a level of resistance to receiving mentorship for other, from others, because it's like this, um, sometimes it could be really icky if you're told what to do and it's out of alignment but that you know you're kind of like yes but if I've I don't experience do that, that uh-huh so I think I mean 
what I'm part of what I'm here to bring forward to is a new way, which is of course how so many people mentor and who I'm gravitated towards mm. to work with is when I know that they are not here to tell me, not here to direct me fully and change me. They're just here to hold sacred me space, and support me and shed light on mm. things that I can't see. Yeah. Oh, and so I feel like this is such a, like, as humans, my part of my vision is that we all get to the point as humans where we're able to do this for, for each of us, not in a way that we're trying to fix people, yeah. but in a way that we're of sacred service to everyone. Yeah. Because like how many people that you, do you talk to, or, you know, maybe the listeners listening that, um, say oh you know I would really actually love if someone just told me if I was doing something like this and I just couldn't see it because Mm -hmm. I'd love to know rather than not know and so I really value that in people when they come to that place of just being willing to hear the things that might be uncomfortable but yet then it's like oh gosh I'm glad I found that out because otherwise I'd be just you know I'd be just going on and I um You know, I might be hurting people or this, that and the other I wouldn't have realised. Yeah, and I really feel like the work that you're doing and and humanity at this time, I can't recall in the last two weeks how many times I've heard different people from all different walks of my life say, I just want a mentor. I just, you know, I'm I'm ready, you know, and and I keep saying like when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Don't Uh force it, don't chase it, don't you know, just be there within self doing the work you need to on self and it will come to you. Absolutely. And it's like, it's like this podcast, right? We've been in conversation for a while and I was like, it's not time yet. I'm not, I'm just not ready. It's not time. And today it it almost got to the point, I think I said this to you before, is like, there's a million reasons why I might have postponed today, but I actually got to the point where I was like, you know what? I feel like the universe is trying to like, it's trying to stop me from speaking my truth mm. and my mission and put myself out there and I ain't going to let it happen. Yeah, girl. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm still emerging out of this snuffle nose, but it's, you know, if I have a snuffle nose and I'm speaking my truth and my message, like, pfft, what does it matter? Yeah. And... Same thing, you know, I was at my sister's wedding on the weekend and I still had a snuffle nose and we, me and my other sister sang a song for the wedding. Oh, yes. It was acapella harmony. It was just delicious. And there was no way I was not going to sing this song. I love your singing. I could listen to you all day long, (laughs) let me tell you. (laughs) It was gorgeous. This song, oh, it was one of um, Mamuse's songs. I don't know if you've heard of um, heard of them, but they're two women, and oh, it's just delicious. So, so tell many... me the, the the singing. Is this something you've always done? Is this something you believe all women, men, oh. everyone can do? Oh yes, um, and it's not about sounding good, right? Mm. So the power of our voice and our reclamation is directly connected to our womb, right? Um, so for women in particular, it's this uh, reclamation of our voice and our womb that is going to just explode so much open for us and our power and our strength. You know, even in the last, you know, couple of clients, I mean, no client escapes this. Let's just say that. (laughs) The voice reclamation, Mm. it's um, so crucial. And because you know it's the voice of your heart and your soul and your womb i mean it all it's all connected right so comes out and um so for myself and my journey i participated in choirs all through school and then did um cabaret performances um my sisters and i actually i can't even believe this happened but all three (laughs) of us did a did a song for a cabaret um and my younger sister actually pursued it a little more as in she um had singing lessons and things like this Mm -hmm. but for me it was more so around like reclamation of my voice and recognizing the power of sound 
And so then what's happened over the last year is I've just been like, when I've been out in nature and down by the creek, songs would start to come through. Oh, how beautiful. So I have so many songs that are just these little ditties. Mm. Like, for instance, I don't know where I was one day, but it's, and it's things that are just so simple, but they reappear in my consciousness when I need it. And mm. not just for me, but for clients, for people on the street, whenever, yes. you know, in my, yo- in my yoga sessions, um, in dance, whenever it's required. And I think mm. this is the power. It's kind of like poetry. Mm. Um, and it doesn't need to have words either. You know, the, the, the frequency of the sound that wants to come out of you, it's more about giving expression to your mm-hmm. soul. And I think I've, I'll say this again and again and again, because like, I believe that our world, uh, would, would heal overnight if everyone was embodied in their soul. Mm. Like just imagine. I agree what... with that. That felt good when you said that really good. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's, it's so simple. It's kind of like disgusting, (laughs) but this is the process of, of, of human evolution. And, and it's also the joy, right? We can get caught up in, in how, uh, you know, how much work there is to do and how hard it is and how painful it is and blah, blah, blah. But really it's, what about the joy and the fun of of the process? The exploration. Uh-huh. Yeah. The juiciness. <sighs> yeah. So I'll um this one song wants to come through. Just it's so so simple. Yes, she's gonna um, sing. <laughs> and and because and it's about acceptance, accepting yourself. Mm. And because when you accept yourself, whew, Mm. how how easy is it then for others to accept you so many of us think that we need to be accepted by others before we can accept ourselves Mm -mm. oh when you accept you it doesn't matter it's this feeling of like oh so yeah this one supported me so much it's super simple i accept all parts of me i accept wholeheartedly this gift to myself and everybody else. I accept all parts of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then it, it's got other words, I think, I but it. I can't remember them right now. And it, it could just go over and over again. And I've had different variations. But um, and what, what I've noticed by just singing every day not even just singing, sounding, yeah. sounding every day. You know, you just didn't start with like a hum, like a, it actually started, I remember now, it started with a sigh. Mm. So what happened as I was reclaiming my feminine and like coming fully into it was this, this like, oh. And you and Keeks both do that. Right, because everything <laughs> transfers. You cannot take the organism Mm. And this is why environment is so powerful, right? Who you surround yourself with, and we've known yeah. this for so long, but it is so crucial. And um, yeah, there. And and I swear, he used to joke. He's like, "You have like a sigh for everything." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you come in the house, you got a sigh. You 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 um lay down in bed, you got a sigh. Yes, mm. it's true. And mm. you know, my nephew also joked about the fact that like. You know, do you always sing? And I'm like, hmm, I guess my life is a little bit like a musical. Oh, I love it. <laughs> right? And um, that just took me to like, my life is like a musical. And I also have this joke with another friend of mine. It's like, live like you're on shrooms. Mm. Um, and, <laughs> and I mean, I've only done sh- shrooms a couple of times, right? Both in ceremony, both yeah. deeply profound. But I, on this topic, because I th- I've been talking about this a bit lately and I've had people, um, you know, clients kind of ask whether I could assist them mm-hmm. in or friends uh, in a sacred ceremony going with shrooms. But what I've, what I feel is true for me at the moment is that I'm here to guide journeys that 
gift you what you're looking for yeah. with psychedelics but without them yes the altered states of consciousness oh, as your pure soul right yeah. because i feel like sometimes it's still external right you're still seeking something outside of yes. yourself and then you don't then realize that you have the power within yourself which i've just said the power within and this is your whole I know. brand i love you <laughs> uh-huh. yeah just plug in your brand in Thank my own you. words <laughs> um yeah the power within and and so this is so much of what you know the mentoring process is for me and what i desire for myself and what i give to others is this remembrance that the power is within 100 percent and the wisdom is within Mm -hmm. so when i'm with clients it's not about telling it's about it's about opening uh uh-huh and like um creating space to let it come through. Oh, this and, feels good. Right? This feels so good. <laughs> and so we go on journeys and oftentimes I have no idea what's going to happen before mm. I go into a journey. Sometimes I do. I know where we're, you know, where the next piece we need to go here. Like this is what's has to yeah. happen. But um, yeah, sometimes it's like, what is the body saying? Yeah. And is that the portal for, t- for today? And I say the word portal. I mean, I love the word, but mm. I mean, not everyone resonates more so like it's, um, you know, that place that you um, then take your awareness to and yeah. you go in a little deeper into mm. that place and you start to get visualizations and images, which is the power of the feminine is the mystery mm. and you open yourself to seeing and then hearing and listening all the senses Uh uh-huh and this is i mean when we talk about shrooms like that's a that's absolutely all of these psychedelics they're they're not all of them so many of them are around like (laughs) heightening your senses yeah and allowing the experience to be like whoa and like some of them is like so focused and you're like just taking in every last detail about something or like mm. something takes, you know, you could watch something and just, it'd be just be the best thing that you've watched forever. But in yeah, your own this, hand, like, Oh, uh huh. <laughs> but this is, we have access to this, like yeah. every waking moment. And the only reason why we don't allow ourselves to be with it is because of the, the overactive mind and, mm-hmm. and the consciousness the self-consciousness about how other people perceive us what we're meant to be doing because of society's conditioning Mm, that's a big one right because you could actually sit and you know some days i do and and you know i've had to um the journey of trust this will come up a lot a lot a lot trust 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 has had to be huge because you know having to like if you want to uncover the mysteries of life and yourself and your soul and be enthralled by who you are, mm. which I believe is like. That's what if we're we, here to do. Right. That's if, why we drop into this earth school. Yes. And so if we were all to do that every waking moment of every day, like I said before, world changed instantly. Right. A deep connection and conversation you'd have with people. <laughs> Yeah, which is, you know, that takes me to another reason, you know, when I've been in conversations, I joked with you at the start around like you just get time literally disappears, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're in this altered state when you're in the flow zone. Oh, yeah. Everything is, there's nothing and everything at the same time. And it's it's the magic space and the magic Mm -hmm. realm, but we can create this. Feels so good too right and like honestly right now like I can feel it I'm if I just (laughs) and we can all do this together Mm. you know that feeling of you just pause and you take a breath you relax your whole body and then say for instance you just focused your attention on your hands and then you start to notice how much you can feel in your hands you put all your awareness there, all of your awareness, and just see how much more alive you can feel, and how much more you are actually connected into your into your vessel, into your body that you were gifted to experience this earth life in this human vessel, in the gift that it is. And then you bring your hands together, and you know when you take the tiniest touch. 
tiniest touch of your your Ooh. fingertips and how electrifying it mm. is and so we have this as accessible in every moment and we're so we don't we don't think we have access to it because we don't allow ourselves to slow down long enough to be able to experience the depth of what we have and the magic that exists right here oh <laughs> and then you can just take that as far as you want to go you know you rub your you rub your fingers across the your arms and you know this is just one experience mm. but working with the body and somatically kind of it it just opens you up to to a whole so other much. way of being right mm. yeah i can i can just see and feel the passion just coming out of you this is just so amazing and so the people that you work with or those that are curious to explore soul deep soul expression and all the work that you do like what advice do you have for them what's happening where can they start what questions can they ask what what have you got mm. well i was actually just thinking i feel like i've been weaving all of it through um already <laughs> in terms of like and that little experience that we just had then mm. You know, so much of life is about experiencing and and I just love that your podcast is called The, the Curious Collective and I yes. probably could have named my own, a podcast of my own the same name because I love, 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 the I value curiosity 100%. so deeply. Up there. <laughs> um, and I would say that when we can embody curiosity and let that be so much of the way that we mm. lead our lives it leaves room for so much growth because we're not stifling ourselves in oh, it has to be this way or it has to be that yeah. way it doesn't have to be black and white there's all this like spectrum between right and feeling ourselves as this full spectrum being we don't need to put labels on it we've already talked about all these different things mm -hmm. of like how how the programming is so deeply con conditioned of that it needs to be a certain way but it of course does not and you know if you, you only have to look at a handful of people to realize that they're all so unique mm -hmm. it's a beautiful so, thing we wouldn't want to all be the same it would be so boring right exactly so it's this that the place of peace that we come to when we journey journey with soul and you uh, and by you know so I feel into the soul as like you're retrieving lost fragments of your soul with every experience that you have so if you're not feeling fully free and liberated in your every waking moment then it's likely that there's you know there's things out of alignment things out of balance you haven't fully reclaimed and not saying at all that I've reclaimed you know that would God, how much boring would the rest of my life be if I claimed everything? <laughs> so, but I would say that, you know, through my journey and like I've started with um, of, you know, firstly having parents that have, they were so restricted in religion that they kind of did the flip of that. And they were like, <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> so that was really potent and powerful for me being a, um, in order to be a free spirit and to explore and, and yeah, the exploration of, um, yeah. And I know that people, you know, it's so common to get nervous and to feel overwhelmed or like, oh, I don't belong there. Um, you know, that's not me, all of these questions, mm. um, especially when you're kind of starting out. But, you know, all you need to do is honestly go to one thing or start with mentoring um, with someone who resonates. And you'll know there's that, you know, there's that feeling of just like. Uh, you, I choose you. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, that yeah. sort of feeling. Uh-huh. Yes. And so I guess this just like cracks the door open. So if it's if it's too scary or overwhelming to go straight into like a you know, an in-person space or a group space, like a circle or um, to, I mean, podcasts, of course, <laughs> amazing place to begin, but uh, also starting to experience and, and going out into nature because holy mm. dooly, how much do we get? It's so freely accessible and 
well, I say that, live in Australia and <laughs> and out in Sanford, which is um, beautiful. Oh. <laughs> so precious and so lush. And, you know, my parents chose here eternally grateful and feel such a deep soul mm. connection to this land. Um, but, yeah, honestly, with my clients, it's whew, how much time are you planting your feet on the earth? Yeah. And, and it's these simple things. And I... You know, I could, yeah, I love this format, like the podcast format to actually just lay them all down side by side because you take them for granted. But these simple things Mm. are actually like the fundamentals and the foundations for life. You know, we cannot ignore the body. We cannot ignore the mind. We cannot ignore the soul and spirit. It's still there. It's like everything needs to come together and you may have a you know more of a focus at one point on developing the mind or you may have more of a focus on developing the soul or Mm. or working with your body and reclaiming your womb cycles or you know heart activation opening Mm. but it's all linked you know there's nothing that is nothing that is disconnected and there's no right or wrong way it's it's I love that you just said that part too so important like there is no right or wrong there is no yeah it's just it just is yeah I can't wait to listen back to this podcast though because I feel like what's coming through is it's always this the simple things that we can forget but actually makes us Mm -hmm. feel the most calm and when you come back to like, okay, I was born from love as a love explosion. I was born innocent and pure. Mm. You know, I don't care what anyone says about how bad someone is or how many wrongs they've done, etc. I I believe that everyone was born <laughs> pure and innocent yeah. and and from that spark that collision and then and then everything else that unraveled from there and everything that they've been taken on is all part of then their persona yeah. of but it's not who we are you know the the out the outer um show or the mass or the laser or everything it's not who we are yeah. it's it's kind of like our survival <laughs> in a lot of ways in this world. And, and so, yeah, so much of what I'm here to bring forward and teach and encourage mm-hmm. is keep trusting that it is safe. And it is so like, think about the gratitude of being alive at this time, right? Like only not very long ago, we would have been burnt. Like I would have been burnt a thousand times at the stake probably, for all the for all the magic and sorcery that I that I do every day and probably you do every day also so it's um yeah deep gratitude for this time of freedom you know we may think that we're trapped but holy dooly we are so, so not free. there's so much spaciousness and uh-huh. to be able to stand on the land and be with nature and be in that oneness is just such a gift in this time Absolutely. And I say I used to feel, um, you know, I used to go through experiences of feeling like, oh, you know, if not everyone can do it and I'm privileged, then why oh, maybe maybe I just won't do it because but but that's since flipped because yeah. if you Gaunt. have right, if you are gifted with the opportunity to explore and come home to yourself and be yourself mm. Then if you don't take it, whew, that that's was powerful. That's um, oh, I don't even know where to go from there. But it's this um, by us claiming it and accepting it and saying yes to the sacred gift it deepens it, and it creates a frequency mm. for those that are still in places that are more dense even if it's in Australia or Mm. overseas where you know things are much more you know third world um chaotic war all these things that 
we create a frequency wherever we're at and any even if it's solo work that we're doing any piece that we open our consciousness and our awareness and we come home Mm -hmm. that ripples out and we can never underestimate even the tiniest action that we take and this is not a fear thing this is like a joy thing oh i can feel it just emanating from me as you're speaking right because you just know and some of my most powerful moments have just been sitting by myself and realizing that if i do nothing nothing but i sit here and i emanate love Mm -hmm. that that's enough oh yes (laughs) put in my body like, yeah. so good because I think we get overwhelmed so much right and we kind of think we're not doing enough I haven't you know and so much I work with women once you go to a point where you reconnect with your soul then inevitably you're going to want to share it with the world yeah. and this is what happens right and this is why I do the work that I do is you go to the zero point you you shed all of your shit you come home to yourself you emerge like a phoenix rising from the ashes you feel um you know this is the deepest like when I'm talking about this I'm saying like this is the the deepest work that I do currently so there's obviously things that you do before this but if you know you've been on the journey for a little while also Mm. then you're ready for that (laughs) Yeah, you're like, I want this and yeah. I know that I'm a wild soul and I'm here to birth some amazing things for this earth and there's just something that's like, oh, just not feeling quite right. Like, it's it's like the people who come to me and work with me is like they've always known that they're, they're here to bring something forward for the earth but they just yeah. don't know uh what it is or like something's missing and they can't quite put their finger on it and they you know they feel a bit constricted and um yeah and so the work is to then like um unveil absolutely just take it down to the (laughs) to the nothingness and remember where we came from honestly Mm -hmm. Remember oh, where we I came love from. all of this. It's felt so good in my body, the whole conversation and everything that you shared. And I know we could literally speak for about <laughs> five hours and I did, not even I did know about you. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <clears throat> everyone that is listening, I have massive, massive thanks to give to you, Odell, for all you've shared today. And the links to be checking out more of Odell's work will be in the thread of wherever this is posted. But for one last question is you've mentioned to me that you've got a future offering coming Mm. up and I would love you just to talk into that before we part ways. Thank you, gorgeous. And oh, I'm so grateful for you and this podcast and and the magic that you're bringing forward for this earth. You are a master connector and (laughs) and communicator and you, you just radiate love and joy um so thank you and yes so there this next offering (sighs) let's just say it's been a about a year or more in the making um from my journey with early birth uh, or more, more commonly known as miscarriage which i've changed the name of that uh from last year and yeah so it's now time to to birth this new offering which is for six women in person Mm. in Sanford well Cedar Creek um on land ah which is in Queensland (laughs) I don't know how far your audience spreads and this is like I've expressed so much through like splattered throughout this conversation Mm. is a journey for the women ready to go to the depths to rise into their magnificence and so what we'll be doing is over eight weeks every friday from 10 till 2 we'll be going into sacred ceremony and going through the layers working with the body uh it will be predominantly journeying experiential like the 
the mystery that is still mm. here. Like I've unpacked so much of what we're going to be doing together, but I know for sure there is so much that is going to just explode. Like out. a coiled spring. I can see a coiled spring. Right. Because what happens when you gather these souls that feel that strong? Yes. To come together into this space. Poo, just soul blown, you know? Yeah. And so that's, um, and then at the end of the eight weeks, so once every woman, so it will be, a, it will be guided through and there will be a point where each woman will go to the depths, be held by her sisters mm. and rise up from the earth and into her magnificence. And she will be, whew, goosebumps, celebrated and honoured for who she truly is. And when we come through the other side of that, there will be integration phases. Every woman will get a, a private call and and then we'll uh, have a retreat at the end. Oh, juicy. <laughs> to, to allow it to fully anchor and, mm. um, yeah, have the 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 anchoredness of the soul to then be able to take that out into the world more yeah. and more and there'll be something after that too i can feel how the importance of mm. continuing the flow in some form with these women and so many of my clients too uh yeah to keep their juices alive and the connection yeah. to let the soul magic be uh, flooding the earth, let's say that. So there'll be lots of song, um, lots of dancing. There'll be lots of whatever needs to happen, basically. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And um, so there'll be um, an early bird, I believe, until the 7th of October. We start on the 14th of October. Um, and with early bird, there'll also be a... Um, and a bonus call with me also. So <clears throat> yeah. And there'll also be payment plan if that is mm. necessary also, but um, yeah, absolutely. All the links to find that out will be wherever you put them. Yes, <laughs> and they will um, be accessible through my website or through um, yeah. If you want to join the sacred soul love letters, that would be amazing too, uh, because I find that it's such a beautiful way to express, um, more of the depth beyond the social media realm. So that's, um, mm. that's a free offering to receive that. And is that it? I feel like you're amazing. <laughs> well, I have absolutely loved having you here with us today and thank you for being you, thank you for sharing your magic with the world. And I look forward to having you on here again at some stage in your next mm. evolution. Mm, thank you, Katie. So, so <laughs> grateful. And thank you to everyone who listened. And maybe I'll see you at some point or hear from you. And that would be amazing too. Thank you. So much love. Bye.